porridge. I think it started late last year when she started eating very little. Uh, so I got kind of worried because I mean nobody eats like one meal a day and then she starts to sleep a lot day sleep, night sleep, you know, every day she's like sleeping. So uh, this goes on for a couple of weeks and I start to witness the beginning of, I thought it was uh, dementia, which it was right. You know, she, she sometimes she forgets who I am and she calls me strange names like her brother or, you know, funny names. Hi, Priya. Why? Go, go. Hi. She's a Piranakan lady. She's, you know, Piranakan, she's like a matriarch. You know, everything, whatever I do is wrong. Whatever I say is wrong. It has to be her way or no way. That was when I was younger. But now, uh, she's like my friend. What she usually does is she will ask me, okay, where's where's daddy? And where's her BFF, Violet Ho? Uh, where's her father? Okay, this is granddad's funeral. These are obituaries that she kept. These are her brothers. And she says, oh, they are coming, you know, at in the evening, so make sure, you know, uh, the place is clean. After a while, if you ask like 10,000 times, I will flare and I will say, they are dead, I'll bring up the arbitrary, I see, 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 look, see, they are all gone. And then she will argue, no, da, 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 and then we will start to fight. Whatever food you give her, she says she have eaten. She forever have eaten. So there's one day I remember, I say, okay, fine, then don't eat. They don't drink. I just fling the freaking anchovy on the floor. And I ran out of the house. I went downstairs. I was crying. I was uh, drinking, smoking. And of course, I was very guilty of what I have done. So after a couple of hours, I came back up and I came in, I sat down next to her. And um, she, uh, she instantly, you know, the mother maternal instinct, ah, who bully you, you know? Oh, of course, that makes it worse. I start crying even louder. So sometimes I wonder how demented she is. So it was kind of a 180 degree switch around, you know, where the one being cared now has to be the caregiver, you know. So of course that added a certain amount of stress, you know, to him. Because of that, it was quite bad for a couple of months. So then the realization sets in, and he also told me that now. She is no longer in his mind, still the mummy, but she has turned into a friend to him. So these are all her brothers and sisters. This is my godmom, Violet, which is also her buddy. Uh, they used to do weight training together. I also wrote down like little notes that, that is encouraging. 
，有活力、乐观就是青春的人。我们都可以做一个八十岁的青春的人。人会老，心不可以老。Okay, this is actually one of my favorite picture of my dad and mom. Okay, this quote. 十年修得共传度，百年修得共枕眠。Basically, it means it takes about ten years to be on the same boat with a certain person, but it takes at least a hundred years to be sleeping next to that person. Basically, it means fate, lah. We are a small family. My dad, me, and my mom. And、uh, she's not working. She's a housewife. Then, of course, daddy passed on. Nothing much to do after that, you know, because there's a help. I think she she's very lonely.、Uh, of course, at that time I didn't hang around at home because I always thought that she's a very strong、uh, woman. And、uh, but I guess I was wrong, lah. So sometimes I look back, I think if only I could have spent a bit more time with her, maybe this wouldn't have happened. Yeah, I I don't know. This series of three paintings is called Wanderlust. It's created when I found out that Mum was not well. The first piece is called Despair. It's called Delight and Delirium. Okay, basically it represents uh, uh, the different manifestation of Mummy when she's in different state.、Um, despair, you know, of course. What can I say? Right, horrible.、Uh, delirium is like ah, which she gets. To be in that state sometimes when she goes、uh, into this weird place, but I believe deep down inside her, she's a delight to be with. And I use this、uh, fake gemstone because I feel deep down inside her, she's a gem inside. Okay, I, I bring her here sometimes because. Um, it's not good for a dementia patient to cook up in the same place for like days. It, it's good that she gets out and then she sees stuff along the street, see people walking around. Because the more she stays at home, I think she will be more withdrawn from the world. Then, 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 ticket. Samandi. Samandi. Ticket. 个玛丽莲梦露，玛丽莲梦露。It is our job to create normalizing environments for persons with dementia as the best treatment for dementia. A human being wants to feel normal. They want to feel competent. They want to feel socially connected. They want to have a reason to get out of bed in the morning, and they want to look forward to the future. When we can provide those things for a person with dementia, that's the best possible treatment we can give. Was very generous. She loved she loved music and cards and games and Liu Hin entertained and looked after all of us for, for the longest longest time. Yeah, she was a hostess of the most ten. Okay, can someone bring my mom in? Oh, there she is. Let's give her a big round of applause.
first time I heard anything about Mrs. Yeo's illness was actually from Mrs. Yeo herself. But everything is true, the, the, our clothes down, we did not buy luggage, so we had to tie up. Uh, we were uh, outside a Chinese restaurant one evening and she just said, uh, basically, I think I'm losing it. I'm forgetting things and... And I said, well, that's just, you're just natural, naturally aging. That's, we do, we all forget things. So I didn't really give it much thought. E L W. Yeah. W A Y S, right? Yes. Like, never seen for a long time, don't know how to dare to see. But then when Galen told me about the situation, it, whew, when we'd had that first conversation, she'd actually mentioned that that if anything like that happened to her, she would rather not be around, to be totally honest. Just have to wish it well, not, not have any negative This is going to win, okay, okay. Madam Long, can you tell me when your birthday is? About what? When is your birthday? Oh. Well, well, uh, well, sex, 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 she was struggling to articulate the names of her friends or people that were in her mind. So she said, you know, she wanted to get a checkup and we brought her to, to our family doctor and he ordered a brain scan for her. And when the results came back, they didn't seem to indicate anything out of the ordinary. You know, over the next few months, we took her to a psychiatrist and a counsellor, and they didn't find anything to suggest dementia. Every doctor was telling me something different. I've had doctors saying that she might have something called frontotemporal lobe dementia or she might have Alzheimer's. So they're not able to look at the brain scan and conclusively match it to why my mother behaved this way. First, we would always say be patient and try to come in as an understanding friend. Even if the person may be doing something wrong, um, we usually would say, you know, go along with the person first. Don't try to correct the person first. Try to rebuild or reconnect that trusting relationship you have with that person. I won't do it. I, just... I think that what people see as frustration and anger and agitation, I see as an attempt by the person to hold on to whatever faculties they have left. Talk about living well with dementia like we try to live well with diabetes.
we received uh, an email from a nursing home in central France. The staff members said, we have a resident here who was a member of the Foreign Legion who fought in Indochina. His dementia is progressing, and now when people knock on his door, he says, halt who goes there. And so uh, they asked him, why are you doing this? And he said, because they keep coming, and they keep coming, and they keep coming. So what they do now is, before going into uh, his room, staff put on a white armband with a red cross. They knock on the door and they say, medic. A medic in the army is a safe person. They're supposed to check you out, deliver personal care. And so under these circumstances, he allows them to uh, take care of him because these are the people who are not the enemy. It's a matter of learning how to think differently. It's a matter of how to uh, understand the point of view of the person with dementia uh, and then being able to come up with a creative solution. No, 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 don't heal your plaster. Yeah, don't do that, don't do that, okay? Don't, don't touch it, don't touch it. See, this is good exercise, okay? Mm -hmm. Wait, look at that. No. Bust it. No. No, go in here. No. So a lot of the frustration that, that the, the helper has is my mother's impatience. In her form of dementia, she just cannot wait. She cannot sit still. She has to keep moving. If she doesn't move, she gets frustrated. Okay. Feels good, right? Yeah. The helper has to struggle with how to keep my mother in one place. Locations. Mm -hmm. So this is Chong Bali. Mm -hmm. And what our friends join us for, we have some activities ah, and program I that see. yeah. I took her down to the Family of Wisdom, which is a session that is run by the Alzheimer's Disease Association, and they said, Yeah, sure, you know, let's try and help your mom. So she would try to go about twice a week and do activities. Ah, and initially it was okay. But the challenges were to keep my mom still, you know, because she always needs to move, she always needs to wander around. But eventually, the last time that we brought her there, you know, they, they said it very diplomatically. They said, you know, the, the group session probably would not work so well for her anymore. So the challenge there is that when you get a new domestic helper, they're not really trained, or, they're, or rather they're not really prepared to deal with this reality, you know, and it's, it's even a challenge for nurses in hospitals. So eventually we said, okay, you know, let's try and get a more specialized, you know, caregiving service. We hired someone who was trained as a caregiver, a professional caregiver and a nurse. Yeah, she will hold you, okay? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I go, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes she hit me on the breast like this. Like, see, you cannot prepare because you do like this, like this, like this. So, especially when you're trying to help her and then she doesn't like, she will hurt you like this. 
So sometimes he will hold your hands to pinch you like this. <laughs> but it's okay. She will let go only. But uh, if uh, some uh, people doesn't like every time, so especially really, I don't know what's happening. Every time, so really, she's going to really get out like that. <laughs> Dementia patients don't do things at random. There's always a reason behind a behavior. So we always advise our caregiver to understand what uh, the reason might be. It could be boredom, it could be anxiety. Uh, and so uh, if, if it's uh, one or, or, or the other, uh, then the, the right tactic to address this type of repetitive behavior is uh, to address the anxiety or to address the boredom. <laughs> you know, I, I look at my, at my mother more as a child in her behavior, you know. So I said, you know, you have to deal with her as you would a child. You know, you have to smile and laugh and, and not take it too seriously if she has a temper. So Haley really didn't work out. You know, she didn't, she didn't get the memo. Caregivers face so many challenges. Many times they assume that they and they alone are responsible for taking care of this person with dementia. And we're not just dealing with the cognitive issues, we're dealing with physical issues, physical frailty, personal care. Uh, it's a 24 hour a day job and it can be exhausting. You're doing well, just keep pressing, okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. The lights and the music of the game excite her and it can hold her attention quite well. Mm -hmm. There's nothing now, okay? Wow. It's just tigers. My mother is a very sociable person, you know. I think she was always very creative, very artistic. She used to design clothes, those children's clothes. She's always been in the lifestyle business. She always had an entourage of people around her. She has lots of friends. So my mother liked to drive when she was younger, up to when she was about 70 years old. And she was always a very independent person and you know she was doing things by herself somehow by putting her in a car she is very calm and in a strange way it connects her it grounds her you know she feels very uh, like she's making progress by going somewhere and the other thing that i've noticed works very well for my mom is when i take her for a drive and just play music Okay, hey, listen. Okay. Only you can make all this world You know the song, right? Yeah, of course. Oh, of course, that. 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 And when we do that, I can actually see that she can still articulate, you know, she tries to sing along, she can remember the melody of the song. In dementia care, it's necessary to actually know the patient as a person. If we want to make sense of what's happening to people with dementia now, we need to look into the past. As the saying goes, the past is a light to what's going on in the present. I think 
Music has got very intrinsic therapeutic qualities. You know, when we listen to a piece of music, we are affected by it. You know, sometimes we think about certain experiences that happened a long time ago, or sometimes we are affected by it emotionally. We feel a little bit more uh, melancholic, or you know, maybe a little bit agitated at certain times. Okay, we'll do one more, okay? Can we do one more? I think I ask. Are there? Galen is here. Don't worry, okay? Just relax. <laughs> Did mom have good breakfast? Okay. Yeah. Yeah? Yes. Come sit down. Why, why don't you give her a few more minutes? Please? Yeah, just a few more yeah. minutes. Yeah, but please. Oh, another, another time. Another time? Another time. Okay. You want a fast song? Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. They do respond, and I mean, through music, um, we actually discover different facets of their lives. And you can see how they respond very differently as they progress through the disease, actually. Yeah, in the earlier stages, they will be, you know, perhaps more verbal, uh, more communicative, you know, through words as well as through song. Um, but as they progress, and when they begin to lose their speech, the music becomes another way for them to express themselves and for us to communicate. Would you like to try some chimes today? Yes, all right. Why? Yeah? I've observed her outside music, you know, when she comes. Although she can't really articulate herself very well um, as to what she wants, she still has though, some, some vocabulary which she attempts to piece things together. Uh, do you want a fast one or a slow okay. one? Yes, a fast one. A fast one? Yes. Ooh. But in the music, you know, when she begins to sing, when she begins to grasp the musical structures, you know, like the phrases of the melodies, even though they are improvised music, you can tell that you know, she's cognitively there within her means. Morning. Hi. Hello, How are you feeling? Uh, okay. On top of my head, apprehensive, apprehensive. Because new environment and I'm not sure how mommy is going to react, feel. Um, but at the same time, relief because I can ah, go home and sleep peacefully. <laughs> Many Kim is quite good. She's aware of the surrounding area of, in fact, what she needs and what she wants. So uh, I would encourage her to make her feel very comfortable that uh, I'm there for her. So 
she will quickly set it down and he would tell me about um, her like and dislike. <laughs> Two months ago, when Ama and me came here at the center, she don't want to do the exercise. She don't want to sit at the table. She just uh, want to sit at the sofa. This, yeah. Then now, what happened? Then now, she... Kiss up, kiss up, kiss up, kiss up. I don't like I don't like Little bit, a I think I just don't really like the idea of like dumping her here and just go gallivanting, you know. Maybe it's the guilt thing eating me, I, I don't know. For now. nursing degrees you have or diplomas or what experience you have when it comes to dealing with a person with dementia uh, it's about dealing with people so we were very lucky uh, recently uh, just a few months ago we were able to hire a relative of uh, our helper Kanet so appreciate that he, she can come maybe like 10 minutes so Mary Jean has come to help look after my mom and my dad and she's able to roll with the punches, what I call the punches. So my mother can get very agitated at this stage. Sometimes she doesn't want to clean up, doesn't want to get changed, and it's a, it's a learning process. Yeah, very nice to see you. What? What is snow? Really? Ah, uh, yeah, it's very nice to see you. You want ice cream? Yeah, I give you a I'm so surprised that she liked me very much. Even though my auntie can eat, she's wondering why. Just because uh, maybe I treat her like a kid, and then whatever she talked to me, I always say okay. She always uh, like to say I love you. Yeah, even though she, sometimes she can talk to me, you're so stupid, but I always uh, yeah. laugh at her like nothing wrong. And then suddenly she will hug me and pick, pick me her and say, okay, I love you, like that. I give you. Very good. Yeah. Ayo. Oh, wow. I love you. Why are you hitting her? Why are you hitting her? You know how you make me. You why, 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 why? Don't, it's okay, okay? No, I help you. Don't, 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 hit, yeah. don't hit Mary Jean, okay? Yeah, see, I love you. Okay. Get out. Okay, okay, come, come, okay. Come, 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 okay. Drink first. I, I go, I go, okay? Get out, get out. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. <laughs> Is she like that every day? Don't every morning? Out. If you change her that you force, she's making get angry. But okay. there is no choice. No, 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 no. no it's, okay. Okay. it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Come, 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 come,
<laughs> it tires people out, you know. Looking after someone with dementia can tire you out. And we do see caregiver burnout. Even in my own family, you know, my, my sister get, you know, she'll call me up and say she can't cope. My helper has been chased out of the house a few times and she's had to just sit in the park next door and wait out my mother's tantrums and come back. So it takes a lot of patience to deal with this. <laughs> it's okay. So fast. So fast what happened? She scratched me. Why did she scratch you? I don't know. It's very interesting, you know, there's an element of guilt that people feel when they are not looking after the person that they need to look after or help to look after. With the person of dementia, you actually, you, you cannot really do enough in a sense because it's like whatever you do, the person will kind of forget what you've done. Even if I saw my mom, you know, an hour or two hours later, if I spoke to her again, she might have forgotten that I, I had actually spent a few hours with her that day. How do we, how do we find a balance, you know? How do you do enough for the person that you have to help and do enough for yourself. So I think it's important for caregivers to look after themselves because I think that balance is, is always out of balance. Did you know that she was still able to write? I didn't know until I saw this booklet. Wow. And the handwriting is still very nice. Oh, do you remember? Do you remember how how fun it How? Chinny, how I did also need to buy by. What did you come back to come away? Say what that mean? Say what that mean? Say what that mean? <laughs> okay, I think compared to the first time that I met you guys, uh, emotion-wise, it's more st stable, it's more subtle. Why? Because uh, I think Gil has been a great help uh, in terms of taking care of mom. And um, that, that really helps me to concentrate on my painting. Huh? How? How? She seems more articulate, actually. Very. Her, her speech is Very. much more articulate. Super. Why do you think she's emo? Just to see somebody new? Or what do you yeah, think? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Huh? She loves to cry. Uh, but she cry half she would laugh. <laughs> right. My mom is very cool. Oh, my God. Why is she putting me? On and off, I will show mom and girl funny clips on YouTube. And, you know, she, she laughs, actually. But what, one thing I don't understand is when we watched National Day Parade just three days ago, she was crying, and of course, Gil was like, <gasps> why, why is she crying? Some people, when they are happy, they cry. Yeah, so, yeah, so in general, I think she's, she's happier. We stopped going to New Horizon. So instead, every day, in the morning and the evening, they will go down and yak, yak, yak with the neighbours. Well, I think it's better to mix with some people that she knew than strangers in the centre. The basic issue is that we have more and more older people who are physically frail and cognitively frail with dementia. It is our responsibility as family members to be able to give what we can 
uh, to be able to provide uh, uh, that extra that they need from us. We need to step up us in our own efforts to make the effort which sometimes would involve and entail some personal sacrifice. <laughs> Actually, it's my first public exhibition. Hopefully, you can sell some painting, but I think generally it's about awareness. So, with this opportunity, I'm able to share what's going on in my life to the rest of the world. She loves my floral painting. I think that partly I do it because I think I want a certain validation. All of us comes from mummy, right? So I think mother's validation is better than like anybody else in this world. Previously, you know, they didn't really talk about certain things. Uh, and of course, being in a Chinese family, physical affection is not very pronounced. Many a times we discussed this and said that, you know, do you actually, have you ever like kissed your mother? And he said, no, I don't. I say, are you crazy? I don't, I don't do that. Then I, because to me it's like, ugh, what am I doing? I just can't exhibit that kind of love towards my mom. But, but after, when she has dementia, uh, I, I did that and I don't find it um, strange or, or weird. It's actually very natural. One more time, quick, quick, kiss here. <laughs> so I injected the eastern element into it using the representation, according to me, is every parent is precious, is golden. And you look after them, you take them as they are. So this actually helps me to also understand the kind of uh, things that he's going through. I think Danny's works at this point in time is uh, both therapy and expression for himself. Um, there are things that he needs to bring out, perhaps that they, he, he's unable to communicate through words. It's wonderfully courageous of him to want to share that with the rest of the world. This whole exhibition unlisted is actually dedicated to my mom, Miss Tian Ching Mo. And I think behind that, the message, like I said, I want all the caregivers in, in this world who has a demented mom, uncle, father, brother, so that they don't feel alone. Hello. Yes. Let's take a walk, come. You used to outwalk me, you know that? You used to outwalk me. I used to worry about what we could do for her, how we could improve her condition. And I suppose past a certain point, you know, you just realize that you cannot control all these things, you know. Her dementia is advancing pretty fast. Who knows, you know, she might not remember me in the next few months. Many things that she cannot say, but I know that she can feel, so as long as we can maintain those good feelings, that, that is all I can do. And we try and make the most of it. We are not powerless in the face of dementia. Persons with dementia can learn. 
Persons with dementia are persons first. This is about learning to live well. This is a message of hope. It's about creating a world that we would want to live in. Persons with dementia teach us. They teach us humility. They teach us understanding. They teach us to think differently. They teach us to look outside of ourselves. That's also a gift. Come, you want to try it? It's nice and warm. Okay. Try. Fish, you miss you so much. The red bean is inside. Nice. Oh.